The database that Tahir Hemphill is using is the same kind of software you might use in your office every day. And the circuit boards that Maria Michaels is using on her project, kids use those to build robots. As I said at the beginning of the show, none of this stuff is necessarily cutting-edge technology. It's how it's being applied that makes it interesting. For another example, we went to go visit the chair of NYU's art department. His name is David Darts, and he says he's been interested in how technology relates to art for a long time. More recently, I'm more interested in embedded systems, uh, in various types of network uh, devices and so on. Uh, a project that I've uh, been working on over the last couple of months is something called the Pirate Box. So the Pirate Box is essentially a portable Wi-Fi device that uh, allows you to create uh, an independent wireless network in any kind of setting. So this is this is not like one of those sort of clear wireless stations that you take with you or a Time Warner wireless 4G no, car. No, not at all. This is completely independent. It's an autonomous system. It's basically an internet inside a box. And when you join the network and open a web browser, you get redirected to a website that's hosted on the box that welcomes you. And is, it says basically, welcome... Would you like to start chatting with other people who are currently on the network? Or would you like to share a file or perhaps download a file that someone has shared? So I have a couple of uh, versions of this. Uh, this one here is actually a, a wireless router. The Pirate Box, the first, the first iteration is actually this one here. Uh, this was actually uh, a little lunchbox that my daughter had. And I needed something to hold the components and uh, the box was the perfect size. So what are the components? So inside the box you'll have a battery, you'll have a small little um, uh, little arm processor, basically a little computer, and a wireless router. And can, can I open it up and look? Sure. So this one actually isn't turned on right now. Um, right. So you have the uh, computer and you have the little wireless router there. It runs on a battery. Um, and the, the, and the memory is just a little... It's a USB, USB stick. stick. You could have, yeah, and you could put a larger drive on there if you want. That's a 16 gigabyte uh, drive. And actually the operating system runs on that as well. I built this one. I put the in, uh, structures for how to build one yourself online. I copy lefted it, which means I licensed it in a way that allows other people to freely uh, look at the code, use the code, repurpose the code in all sorts of interesting ways. I put this one online, it started to generate attention, people were pretty excited about it, and uh, a community of hackers started to develop around the project, and people started to port it then to other devices. And someone in Berlin, a brilliant hacker uh, in Berlin, then came up with this idea of actually porting it directly to uh, a wireless router, simplifying the process. I mean, this is sort of version two. I started, I started working with her. This is just a wireless router, uh, which also runs on a battery and has a, a USB storage uh, component to it. And that's all you need. You don't this, even need the computer. This is all you need. And this one is actually quite simple to build. Um, she created this great installation package that you can install it directly on it. David says the inspiration for his pirate boxes came from something you may see on the streets of New York if you have a very sharp eye. We found one in Brooklyn. This is what's known as a dead drop. Basically, somebody has embedded a USB memory stick in the wall, leaving just the USB connector sticking out. So if you have a USB extension on your computer, you can plug into it, leave whatever files you want, take whatever files you want. Nobody knows who did it or what it is. That dead drop contained uh, a lot of stuff about Denmark. I guess a Dane put it there. David Darts wanted his pirate boxes to have the same air of mystery about them. I was really excited when I saw the dead drops start showing up around New York, and uh, that helped spark the idea for this project. Around the same time, I was teaching a media class here at NYU and uh, was trying to figure out a better way to share files with students when we're in the studio. And I looked commercially for a device. To my surprise, I couldn't find anything, so I decided to build one uh, on my own using some cheap components and free software. And uh, Adam's dead drop was definitely uh, in my mind as I was building this. The other thing I should point out is that the server purposely doesn't keep any logs. It doesn't record any information about the computers that connect up to it. The only thing that gets left behind are the files that students or that people decide to share. 
So have you ever taken this out to, say, you know, Washington Square or Central Park and just turned it on? And if yeah. so, what happens? Yeah, I do that all the time. And I work in cafes a lot, and uh, I'll bring this with me uh, and just turn it on as well. And it's, it's actually really fun because people uh, will join the network. They're always looking for free open wireless networks. And then they'll come to the website, and uh, some of them will definitely... Uh, upload files to the box. So it's always a surprise when I go home and open up the box and, and learn that, oh, cool. I, and sometimes people will share photographs, they'll share the you know strange things, various types of media <laughs> files, and you never know exactly what you're going to get. Electronic books, PDFs, all sorts of things. Hmm. So, hmm. What's the most surprising thing you've ever found on one? I, when I was in a cafe one day, someone was taking webcam photos of me and then they uploaded them to the device, and I have no idea who did that. So it was, you know, me working. Someone was taking pictures of me and then uploaded them. To the, that was probably the most surprising uh, uh, files that I ever found. So next time you're in a cafe, keep your eyes out for David Dart's pirate box. Oh, and that dead drop in Brooklyn. If you can find it, you'll be able to download versions of our show's theme music and some additional video. 